Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony, transcribed. K is for Kroger, C is for cut, B is for beef. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef, and Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. Yes, Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste, and the reason is this. Before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Mind you, that's before the meat is weighed and priced, which means more meat for your money. And it's top U.S. government grades of beef. It's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. Yes, in Kroger cut beef, you get a better value in top grade beef. For example, take a specific cut of beef, say a Kroger cut chuck roast. Before the roast is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess waste and stringy meat. That means you get a better value because you get more solid meat, only a minimum of bone. Yes, you receive more meat, less waste, whether you buy a steak or a roast. So visit your neighborhood Kroger store soon. Make it a rule to get Kroger cut beef. It gives you more meat for your money. And now, hearts in harmony. While she was in Mrs. Mabel Peterson's home looking for the elusive Robert Wilson, Penny Gibbs was knocked unconscious. Today, in the office of lawyer Frank Carter, Penny says to her employer, And when I woke up, Mr. Carter, I was in a dark room. It was pitch black and I couldn't see a thing. And Wilson and Mrs. Peterson were there? No, just Mr. Wilson. Mrs. Peterson was in another part of the house. I could hear her moving. Yeah. Then what happened? Well, I uh, thought Mr. Wilson was going to kill me for a while because my hands were tied to the chair I was sitting in. And then for a long time, nothing happened, and Mr. Wilson didn't say anything. He just paced the floor. Well, when he did speak, what did he say? He said he'd let me go, but he warned me that this was my last chance to get out of the Ainsley case and stay out. Well, that's an admission of guilt if I ever heard one. Yeah. Sure wouldn't hold up in court, though. I'm sorry I was caught that way. I'm sorry you were caught at all. I'd never forgive myself if anything serious had happened to you. In fact, I wonder if you're going to forgive me for that bump on the head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, you got it working for me. But believe me, I didn't hire you to get knocked out when you came to work for me. Well, I kind of think I'll survive. I'm going to make sure you do. Oh? You've tangled with Robert Wilson and Mrs. Peterson for the last time, Penny. From now on, I make the contacts. Say, you didn't get a good look at Wilson at all, not even a brief one? No. No, when he knocked me out, he came up from behind me. Mrs. Peterson held me so I couldn't turn. You know it was Wilson who slugged oh, you? sure. Mrs. Peterson called him by name. Oh, that was cooperative of her. Yeah. <laughs> And in this room, when he talked to you, it was much too dark to see what Wilson looked like, huh? Yeah, it was too dark even after my eyes got used to the dark. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wilson is still one move ahead of us. Yep. But just one move. We can't nail him if we don't know what he looks like. I'll tell you one thing. Why? I know what his voice sounds like. You sure you could identify oh, him? Oh, I'd know that anywhere, even on a telephone. Well, that's something. But we've got to find him to hear his voice, and that's something else. You mean you think maybe he's left town? No, no, I don't think that. He'll probably stick around a while to see if his warning to you took. Well, I'm not afraid to keep working on the case, Mr. Carter. Threats don't bother me. Now you'll keep on with the case, Miss Gibbs. But not in the same capacity. You've done more than your share of the dirty work already. If there are any further risks to be taken, I'm going to take them myself. <laughs> All right. Gee, I wish this guy Wilson would come looking for me. Well, he certainly knows where to find you. Yeah, he does. But if he sees you here, he won't talk. If he's smart. Mm. And no, he won't come looking for me unless he's a fool. I gotta find him. How? Golly, I wish I knew how. Well, all things come to him who waits, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of a way to find him. Oh, it's almost lunchtime, and you have to go to the church this afternoon, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, uh, as a token of apology for that bump on the head, uh, let me take you to lunch, Miss Gibbs. All right, if you let me call you uh, Frank and you call me Penny. How about that? All right. <laughs> but I don't have much time. <laughs> and I don't have much money. So we'll make it brief and inexpensive. 
to fit your schedule and my pocketbook. Shall we go, Miss Gibbs? I know just the place. Yo, well, here are the reports on those calls I made for you last week, Dr. Oh, Judd. thank you, Miss Gibbs. You saw all these people? <laughs> I put in some extra time. Oh, there should be more church people like you, Miss Gibbs. The church's work would not only be easier, but benefit a greater number of people. Uh, how are the Bensons? Oh, Mrs. Benson's very ill. Sir, I think you'd better go see them. I will, this afternoon. Uh, did you get Mrs. Cotton to go over and help Mr. Benson? Yes, yeah, she and her daughter are taking turns staying with the Bensons. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I phoned your Dr. Ryan about Mrs. Benson yesterday, and he said he'd go over and see her. I think he went last night. Well, I hope he's able to help her. Well, he's going to give her all the help he can, and free of charge. <laughs> I knew he'd do that. <laughs> well, doctors of the body demand no more than doctors of the soul, if the patient cannot pay, Miss Gibbs. Mm-hmm. Just as we of the ministry pledge our lives to God, a doctor pledges his life to relieve the pain and suffering of the human mind and body. Dr. Ryan is doing only what he has devoted himself to do. Yeah, I know that, but will Mr. Benson take charity? He's a very proud old man. <laughs> yes, he is indeed. But I've arranged that with uh, Dr. Ryan, Miss Gibbs. He's going to give Mr. Benson a bill that he'll find quite easy to pay. <laughs> I think I know what you mean, sir. I think the plan will be quite acceptable to Mr. Benson. Oh, uh, would you check through the welfare cases for this week, Miss Gibbs? Mm -hmm. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, there's a man in the other room who's been waiting an hour to see me. Yeah, all right away, sir. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Roberts. That's all right, Dr. Judson. I have all the time in the world. Dr. Judson. You're a busy man. Oh, oh golly. Oh, sweet. Frank Carter's office, Carter speaking. Hello, Frank, this is Penny Gibbs. Yes, Penny. Look, uh, I'm at the church. Well, what's the matter with your voice, Penny? Nothing's the matter with my voice. I, I, I just don't want anybody to hear me. Well, why the secrecy? Frank, listen to me. Dr. Judson is seeing a man in the other room, in the room right next to this one, a man named Robert. So? So I'm, I'm sure that's not his name. I'm positive that the man out there is Robert Wilson. Well, what makes you think so? You don't know what Wilson looks like. Yeah, but I heard him twice just before Dr. Judson closed the door. And I, I told you, if you remember, Frank, that I'd know his voice anywhere. And it was Wilson's voice, Penny, you sure? Oh, Frank, I've never been so sure of anything in my life. Oh. Well, maybe this is our lucky day. I'll be right over. Yeah, but hurry, will you? I, I don't know how long he'll be here. I'll be there in ten minutes. You better make it sooner if you can. He may be here just a few minutes. And there isn't very much I can do to hold him. Church is always busy, Dr. Judson. But I have to impose on you just the same. Well, I'm glad to be of any service I can, Mr. Roberts. I'm sure you are. Well, now, what can I do for you? As a teacher of God's Word, you can do a great deal for me, Dr. Judson. Mm -hmm. I represent a charity seeking funds to build a home for homeless children. Well, well, that's a very worthy cause. And a magic mission. Yes, of course it is. But I think the day will come when homeless children will be a thing of the past, Dr. Judson. But today, homeless children are a problem that must be solved by the means we have at hand, however unsatisfactory they are. Yes, I'm afraid you're right there. Now, uh, what do you want me to do? Oh, nothing really, or at least not much. Well, <laughs> before I do anything, much or little... I think perhaps I ought to know you better. After all, there are certain... Oh, I know exactly what you mean, Dr. Judson. The worthy cause of charity is often misused by individuals seeking personal gain. I uh, have identification and references that I'm sure will allay any fears in that direction you might have concerning me. Oh, of course, I don't doubt that you have. <laughs> <laughs> but showing them will be better than talking about their motive. <laughs> Here's my identification card from the institution. Uh-huh. Oh, Clyde Parsons is your president, is he? Yes. Uh, do you know him? Yes, yes, quite well. I haven't seen him in several years, though. He's a fine man. Oh, I didn't think so once. <laughs> he taught me in college my junior year. <laughs> I remember his terse and biting comments on the margin of my paper signed with that bold CP. <laughs> yeah, he still signs his initials as if he were angry with his pen, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does. Here's a letter stating the disposition of the funds and the amount we intend to raise. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are after a large amount, aren't you? There's a great need, Dr. Judson. Uh, that's indeed a tragic truth. 
Uh, here's a letter from Reverend Johnson at Wall City, a letter endorsing our charity from the Reverend Dr. Williams of Branchville and several others you might like to look at. Oh, I think you have sufficient identification, Mr. Roberts. Now, uh, what can I do to help you and your cause? I'd like a letter from you endorsing the fund, Dr. Judson, and if you can afford it, a small contribution from the members of your congregation. Oh, I think we can devote a collection or two to help us children, Mr. Roberts. Uh, now, what would you like me to say in my letter? Well, anything you'd like to say. Well, suppose you dictate it and I'll sign it. All right. Oh, uh, your phone is ringing, Dr. Judson. Well, one of my assistants is in the other room, Mr. Roberts. She'll answer it. Now, you dictate the letter and I'll write it. Hello? Hello, Penny. Oh, yes. Penny, this is Frank. Oh, hello, Frank. Where are you? I thought you'd be here by now. I would have been, but I had an accident with my car. Oh, no. No, it's not serious, but I can't leave until the police get through asking questions. What I need is a lawyer. Well, how soon can you get here? I don't know yet. The other guy's yelling it's my fault, and it is. Is Wilson still there? <laughs> yes, I can hear him talking. Well, can you hear what they're saying? No, not a word. Well, I hope to get away from here in a few minutes. I'll be there as soon as I can. Well, look, Frank, hurry, will you? This may be our last chance to find him. There's no telling what he's saying. I hardly recommend that you give Wilson Roberts a few minutes of your time and as many of your dollars as you can spare. Do you have that, Dr. Judson? Yes, Mr. Roberts. Uh, just a minute, though. As many of your dollars as you can spare. For he is devoting his time, his energies, and his life to bringing happiness and comfort to the children of America who have known nothing but tragedy and sorrow. And comfort to the children of America who have known nothing but tragedy and sorrow. It's a splendid letter, Mr. Roberts. Now sign it, Dr. Judson, and I'll take no more of your time. Well, this was time well spent, I assure you. There you are, sir. Signed with pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Judson. Thank you from the bottom of the heart of every poor homeless child in the land. Will the kind and generous Reverend Dr. Judson be made to suffer by Robert Wilson's trickery? Will Frank Carter arrive in time to thwart Wilson's plan and at the same time get needed evidence for the mysterious Ainsley case? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. KCB. KCB. KCB means Kroger cut beef. And Kroger cut beef means more meat for your money. That's right. Kroger cut beef gives you more meat, less waste. Because before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. For example, if porterhouse steak is your favorite, you'll find that at Kroger's you don't pay steak price for stringy ends and waste. The Kroger method of cutting beef removes the long stringy end and excess waste before the steak is weighed and priced. But see for yourself by visiting your Kroger store. Notice that you get more meat less waste, and it's top U.S. government grades of beef, beef that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. Remember, whether you buy a steak or roast, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. Yes, everybody's happy when you go to your neighborhood Kroger store for Kroger cut beef. Your family loves the deliciousness, the juicy flavor of Kroger beef. You love the way it cooks up so perfectly. And your pocketbook loves the fact that Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. Get some without delay. Make it a rule to get Kroger cut beef and get more meat, less waste, at your neighborhood Kroger store. Be sure to join us again tomorrow, same time, same station, for another absorbing transcribed chapter of Hearts in Harmony. <laughs> 